I'm Jared from Sound Guitar Lessons, and I absolutely love practicing. I love it so much. That's why I teach it. That's why I try to help others find that joy in playing an instrument that I know is very possible for us to experience. However, what happens if we get injured along the way and the very thing that we're trying to get enjoyment from is causing us pain? Uh, it's a very conflicting experience. I've had it happen twice in my life, two uh, really serious injuries with my left arm from practicing that were repetitive strain injuries or tendonitis and uh, had to go through a long kind of recovery process. So a lot of times talking to other guitar players about this is not the most informative thing to do because, uh, well, we're just guitar players. I, I went to many workshops of guitar players and I've heard the, the question come up many times where an audience member might say, hey, have you ever had issues with your arm and, and pain? Uh, what do you do about it? Uh, I remember two in particular. One was David Russell, the classical guitar player, and uh, his answer was, uh, no, you know, sorry, I can't help you. And another one was Pat Metheny, the uh, jazz guitar player, and same answer. He's like, oh, no, you know, I'm lucky, I'm grateful I never had any arm issues. It's like, great, what do you do? Well, maybe we shouldn't be asking guitar players uh, for help with our arm injuries from playing. Maybe we should be asking uh, professional physical therapists and doctors. And that is exactly what this episode of this uh, Sound Guitar Lessons channel is today. We have a special guest. Her name is Abby Halpin, and she is a a uh, physical therapist uh, in Seattle where I live. And uh, the second time I had an arm injury, I went to her for some help and got some exercises and feedback and treatment for uh, my arm issues. And it helped immensely and I've been in touch with her since. And she offered to uh, offer some advice on the channel for people that are potentially experiencing issues. And even if you're not, uh, it's something that's very possible, so we want to be mindful of our bodies and our posture, our breathing, all of that. And Abby is the expert on this stuff, and she's uh, she specializes in working with performing artists. Her business is called Forte Performance and Physical Therapy, and uh, she's awesome. So I'm going to turn it over to Abby, and she's going to answer some questions that some of my students submitted for her about physical issues and injuries around being a guitar player and playing the guitar. So I hope you enjoy and thanks so much. Hi there, my name is Abby Halpin and I'm a physical therapist here in Seattle. Jared asked me to hop on here and give some thoughts on what I typically see guitarists coming in with as a physical therapist. And then also some of his students submitted some really wonderful questions. And so I'm gonna put myself in the hot seat, just break over right down the list and get you the information the best that I can. So the first thing that I want to do is do a little bit of a myth buster. There is no such thing as bad posture. I think in performing arts, uh, we have this kind of culture of there is a right way to sit or a right way to play. Um, and if you're not doing it the right way, you're more likely to get injured. Not the case. The best thing that you can do is have a really broad vocabulary a lot of variety in what's possible. So if you are pigeonholing you yourself into one movement pattern, think of it this way. You are only using the same tissues over and over again to play your instrument. So if you can create options and have choice in your posture, and yes, slumping is one of them, um, you are going to have more stamina during performance and practice sessions. You will have greater resilience over the course of your career as a musician. Um, and it'll actually have less likely um, injuries in the path of your musicianship. So um, the more that you can create options in what your body can do and still play well, the better off you are going to be in the long run. There are a few things that I see more often in guitarists. The, the typical pattern is essentially like if you're playing the guitar, but then you put the guitar down and walked away as though you were still playing the guitar. That's a problem, because again, you're pigeonho pigeonholing yourself into that guitar position, right? So what that looks like is rib cage that was shifts off to the left slightly. I'm exaggerating here. Um, the right shoulder and rib cage get depressed a little bit, and then the shoulder blade and the shoulder come around the front so that you can reach over your instrument. There's also a lot of cervical rotation to the left, because you have to look at your left hand a lot when you're practicing, right? Um, None of this is inherently bad. It's just if you can't get out of it, you're more likely to get certain injuries. It's usually forearm, elbow, hand, um, shoulders. So there's some low back pain and neck pain as well. It just kind of depends what else you have going on in your life, what you do for work outside of music, etc. cetera. Um, to get out of this pattern, is this, you essentially have to train up the opposite. 
So let's do this together. Get your heels planted on the floor. If you're sitting, get your sit bones planted in the seat and let your chest just relax down a little bit and drop your left shoulder. That's gonna shift your ribs off to the left a little bit and then turn your head to the right. You might notice this little strap muscle turn on in here. And just hang out there and breathe. And what you'll notice is you have to breathe a little bit more into the right side and expand into that side where you're playing the guitar typically gets compressed. So just again, creating variety, right? We're getting into the opposite so that then when you let go, you kind of live somewhere in the middle, which is more comfortable. Let's get to some of these questions. So the first question is, are there proper ways to breathe that help being more relaxed? And how can I be more physically relaxed in general? This is pretty important for performing, right? Um, let's talk about our nervous system before we get into being relaxed. Um, our nervous system has a part of it called the autonomic nervous system. It's in charge of anything that we don't really have voluntary control over. So things like our organs. So maybe our heart rate, blood pressure, that kind of stuff. Inside our autonomic nervous system, there are two branches. There's the sympathetic, parasympathetic. The sympathetic is your fight or flight. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. This is where we wanna live if we wanna spend more time in a physically relaxed posture and feel calmer while we play. The way to trigger your uh, rest and digest half of your autonomic nervous system is to focus on your exhale. If you wanna ramp up, focus on your inhale. So let's talk about rest and digest. Think about lengthening your exhale. So take a nice, easy breath in through your nose and then exhale for as long as you can until you feel like you're getting the last little ounces of air out. And then pause for two or three seconds and then nice and easy breathe back in through your nose. What you should notice from a movement perspective is that as you get further into your exhale, your chest will start to drop. The front of your ribs will start to kind of gather together. You might notice your abs turn on as you really fully exhale. And then hold that for those couple of seconds and then nice and easy breathe in, which is gonna make you breathe into your back a little bit more, maybe a little bit more into your chest, not shoulders, right? Not like the stress thing, but just higher up in your rib cage. Um, so that would be a good just breathing pattern to work with to get you more into that rest and digest part of the nervous, nervous system activity. Um, posturally, you can do kind of the same stuff that we talked about at the beginning. Get your heels grounded on the floor or sit bones grounded on the seat or your stool if you're sitting and let your chest just relax down. And then focus on breathing into your back, into the sides of your ribs, um, and just focus on some expansion and movement there. The more grounded you can feel in your heels and the more relaxed you can feel here, the more likely you are to essentially up train your relaxation half of your autonomic nervous system. Um, next question, what stretches might be good for guitarists? Yeah, the most common ones that I tend to give out are forearm stretches. So elbow straight and then just a nice easy pull with at your wrist. The key is easy. This should be the amount of intensity that you could just hang out here all day and feel totally comfortable. And then you wanna do the opposite with your palm up and nice and easy pull and get a stretch on the front of your arm. The last one isn't necessarily a stretch, but more of like an expansion practice. So laying on your back with your feet up maybe on the wall or um, on the seat of a chair with your knees bent to 90 degrees and then your arms out to the sides. Um, and just kind of lay there and breathe and you wanna focus on expanding into your upper chest and into your back especially the upper chest part is where we tend to see guitarists from having to hold their instrument live in a shorter position. So we're just trying to create some elongation there. Okay, give those a try. Let me know how it goes. Okay, so the next question. Is it true that some repetitive strain injuries can be so bad that they never fully heal to their original strength? Oh, great question. The answer is definitely no. <laughs> um, Although it does happen, and it's not because they ha it has to. <laughs> um, repetitive stress injuries happen when you ask your body to load more or accept more volume of training than what you've built your resilience up for. Um, the other way that this can happen is that you're not having recovery time. So if you're experiencing discomfort and that discomfort sticks around until you or your next practice session, um, you're not getting recovery in between your sessions. So um, the under recovery can 
um, impact you just as much as overtraining. Um, if you have a repetitive stress or strain injury, the best thing to do is have a movement professional, APT, help you and guide you to work your way out of it. Um, because some people need a lot of rest. Some people need a change in the way that they're doing something. It just completely depends on who you are and what you've been up to. <laughs> um, so I would highly recommend that for this question, if someone's experiencing this, get a movement professional to help them out. A PT is really good at figuring out why the repetitive stress happened in the first place. And it might not be just training. It might be your movement patterns um, and how you're showing up while you're playing the guitar. The next question is, is it sometimes healthy to play a little bit to stay conditioned while recovering from a repetitive injury, or is it always best to just rest and wait? It is often healthy to play a little bit even when injured. I tend to tell people that, like pretend this is a forearm injury, right? Your forearm is in charge. Um, if it allows you to play 20 minutes a day, play 20 minutes a day. You wanna keep as much of a base as possible so that you don't have a training error when you inevitably get back, get excited and start playing again. <laughs> um, the other thing that helps in terms of continuing to play is that your brain gets messages about movement um, that are, are pretty much a positive reinforcement, right? You like to play the guitar. So um, you get some messages that aren't discomfort. You get movement, you get vibration. I mean, all these other sensory experiences that can kind of diminish the danger signals and, and the discomfort that you're feeling with an injury. Again, have somebody guide you through this because everybody's gonna be a little bit different. The last question is, what is carpal tunnel versus tendonitis and how are they different? Yeah, good question. The mechanism of um, discomfort with these two things are very different. Um, the feelings and the way that you address them can be quite similar. So it's really hard to tell sometimes. The carpal tunnel is an anatomical structure or feature. <laughs> um, on the front of your wrist is a little piece of tissue that goes across here, and there are tendons and nerves that run under it. So if you get compression on the front of your wrist, either from something external, like something pressing on it, or playing kind of funky and you get some kind of movement, movement way kind of compression on the front of your wrist. Um, your median nerve, which is in charge of these three fingers and a little bit of your ring finger, can get squished. And what that feels like is sometimes pain, sometimes numbness and tingling. Sometimes people get weakness, um, so they're like dropping things, or they will find like their agility in their fingers is down. Um, the tough part about carpal tunnel syndrome is that the median nerve can technically be and often be impinged at other spots at the same time, or it can be impinged somewhere else and be misdiagnosed as a carpal tunnel syndrome. So make sure you have a good diagnostician, either a physical therapist or a physician, who can help you figure out you know, where that median nerve might be compressed somewhere along the pathway. Um, tendonitis is when a tendon, which is what attaches a muscle to a bone, gets inflamed. So the tendon's job is to essentially be the pulling. So the muscle contracts and it pulls on the bones so that your skeleton moves when your muscle contracts. Um, tendonitis is a really common repetitive stress injury. Um, but that usually looks like pain and swelling. It usually hurts when you move it um, or maybe shortly thereafter. Um, so they can look similar because they both can kind of have pain and swelling involved. Um, with both issues, you need to find someone to figure out why the thing happened in the first place. If you don't have a healthcare provider that's asking why did this happen in the first place, find a different one. <laughs> um, both of them have, you know, a certain amount of like load issues. If you have, if you have too much load in terms of compression, if you have too much load in terms of work, um, so sometimes the treatment approach can look similar, but um, you need to have somebody who knows the difference and can figure out what is specific to your case that you need to work through. I hope that this was helpful. Um, please submit further questions. I would love to help out in the future and make sure that I'm serving you in a way that works best for you. Um, feel free to reach out to Jared directly. You can also find me on Instagram at Forte Performance PT. You can also email me anytime, abby at forteperformancept.com. Google me, whatever. You can find me, right? Um, thanks for having me and have a great day. <laughs>